My name is Ali al Karaguli. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you why complex numbers are not really complex. In fact, that's another one of those stupid names that are more often confusing than it is helpful. It does make sense that we're them, we call them complex numbers because complex is kind of like when you're calling something an apartment complex, is that it's made up of a bunch of things. So complex just means it has multiple components and they're separated by this plus sign. So in a way, it is complex, but it is not complicated. It's actually very, very simple. And I'm gonna show you a much more visual, intuitive way to look at that. And in this video, we're gonna put end to the whole complex numbers, stupidity, and mystery, and it's gonna become something that's very, very easy for us. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to explain to you the mathematical notation, the A plus BI, or whatever, like real plus imaginary, and why that creates something that is complex. We're gonna explain what that looks like, then we're gonna go ahead and explain it visually and intuitively. We're gonna make sense of it. And then once I go ahead and do that, I'm gonna erase it and I'm gonna show you a much cooler, more elegant way to think about complex numbers. And then more importantly, I'm gonna show you some real world examples of complex numbers, why we use them and why they even exist in the first place. So the very first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna erase this guy over here. And real quick, I want to take a quick second before I talk about complex numbers, let's talk about like normal numbers, like quote real numbers. And I'm gonna use a very simple example, which is my hand. So I have a hand right here with five fingers and you can count, you can say one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna assign the number five to the number of fingers I have. We're gonna just say N equals five, okay? That's a number, right? That's a real number. There's a physical quantity that you can see, one, two, three, four, five, right? And, and, and you can, in theory, see it when you're looking at it from, from this angle over here. But now what happens if I go ahead and I do something crazy? such as like, I just go ahead and I hide one finger. And now you can only see four fingers. So if someone's looking at my hand from, from the way you're looking at it, you see n equals four. However, someone else looking from over here, if I were to rotate, sees that I have a fifth finger here that's hidden. However, it is not apparent on the same dimensional. The only ones that are apparent are these four guys, and this fifth guy is hidden, such that one, one, one person may interpret this kind of finger hand situation happening as I have four fingers that are visible to you and one that is not visible to you from this current perspective that you're in. So we're just gonna call this visible or hidden or imaginary number, we're just gonna call it I. So we're gonna add four plus one I, okay? Or one J or whatever letter you wanna use. So again, in this case, we have two components that are describing my fingers where there's four that are visible that you can see, there's one that's hidden. Now what happens if I do this? and I hide one more finger, now you can see three plus two I, okay? And then I keep going. And then I have two plus three I, one plus four I, up until I hide all my fingers and all you can see is there's basically no fingers. I have zero fingers. However, someone looking at it from the other side sees that I do have fingers. So I have quote unquote zero real fingers that you can see from over here. And I have five hidden or imaginary or invisible numbers. So I'm gonna write that last one. I don't know if you can see that over here, I'm just gonna write it over here as n equals zero plus five j or five i, okay? Now what I want us to do is I want us to go ahead and plot this kind of crazy thing that's happening. Um, and you're gonna start making sense of it. So if I start plotting, let's say in time, now let's, say, let's turn this into a function where in time the number varies such that like, let's say as time goes by, I go and I start doing this and then I start making my fingers show up again. I'm just gonna plot it as a function in time where this is time going by, and then over here is number of fingers. Let's say, let's call it N, and these are the numbers of the fingers that you can see. So let's say I start out with five over here, and then as time goes by, it goes from five, four, three, two, one, zero over here, right? And these are, again, the numbers that you can see, right? So then what happens if I start plotting the, the reverse, which is like my, 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 my invisible fingers, right? Then it basically becomes, so if I have five fingers that are showing, at the same time, I have zero that are hidden. So this starts over here, and then at one, two, three, four, five. And it looks like the opposite, right? But then here's the crazy part. What I'm basically doing is I'm plotting the quote real number of fingers, and then the quote imaginary or hidden number of fingers. However, if you take at any time the numbers over here and you add them, you're always gonna have five in total. Five, 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 five. And that's because I always have five fingers. The five fingers are not going anywhere. This is the total number of fingers in the system. However, depending on which time you're viewing this function of me doing this with my fingers, if you're catching me at a certain time, you may only see three. At another time, you may see only one. At another time, you may see only five. At another time, you may see zero. So basically, complex numbers or anything involving imaginary numbers in general is something we use to describe dynamic systems, systems that are changing, 
right? If the number is static, such as my finger, I don't need to use J or I to describe my hidden fingers. I can just say I have five fingers, and that's what you see at all times. And there are examples that I'm going to be covering later in the video to explain this analogy. But again, this basically gets you the idea of what the imaginary numbers are trying to do. So now let's go ahead and draw this on the quote complex domain. So again, if we take our same example of like our 5 plus 0j, 4 plus 1j, 3 plus 2j, uh, 2 plus 3j, 1 plus 4j, 0 plus 5j. Okay, so we just have that over here. We can go ahead and draw this on the complex plane where again the j or the i is basically our imaginary number or hidden number plane. And then this is our quote real or visible, the things that you can see and measure. And we can basically start, start draw, draw, uh, drawing them like an ordered pair. Like here at five real, we have zero imaginary. Four, we have one imaginary. Three, we have two. Two, we have three. One, we have four. And then we have zero. And then we basically have a shape that looks like this. Now, if I take this function and I make it like keep, keep, keep basically rotating, I'm going to end up with this nice little rhombus shape, right? And this is what my function looks like. On the, on the quote complex plane. So basically if I take any moment over here, I'm basically able to tell at, given a certain time, let's call, let's equate this time to some kind of angle. And let's, let's say that you're basically rotating over here, depending on where you look at this line over here, you can draw to the real line and to the imaginary line. And this tells you how many visible fingers I have at a given time. This tells you how many uh, hidden or quote imaginary numbers I have or ones that you cannot see at a given time. So again, all we're doing with complex numbers initially using this representation is we're representing the things that you can measure, things that you can see in, in the specific time instance you're in, and the things that you cannot see yet, right? Because again, imaginary numbers does not mean that that value is imaginary or does not exist. It just exists, but not at the time or the snapshot that you're seeing in this shape. So again, if we were to draw that in the time domain, we saw how it looked like something like that. And basically, how, how does this apply into the real world? Well, if we think about real world functions, uh, there we often see how things change in the real world. Uh, they basically take the form of sinusoids. For example, if we take the example of electricity, so like something like DC electricity, like DC, I don't know, like let's say um, you have a five volts uh, DC, and then you have five volts AC. Well, how, how would these two values behave differently in the real world? Well, the DC value, um, and I'm hoping you can still see this, as time goes by, let's say this is the voltage, five, is just constant. It's just five volts at all times. So if you were to plot it in the complex domain, it's gonna be very boring. There is no complex value because you're gonna basically be chilling at five volts at all times. This is not gonna change. You're basically drawing a five on the number line and that thing stays the same. However, the moment I start drawing an AC signal, and let's say it's oscillating between five and zero volts in a sinusoidal shape, now I am not at, sometimes I'm at five volts, sometimes I'm at zero, then I'm back at five, then I'm back at zero, and so on. And I start doing that in a circle, or like let's say this is, I don't know, like negative five, just to make the math easier. Now I'm not staying here, Sometimes I'm here, other times I'm here, other times I'm here, and I basically keep going in a circle. And that's basically what the sinusoid is telling me, is that I'm just, I just keep cycling. And this is basically a very simple example of why, when we need complex numbers. Complex numbers basically tell us, given a, a, a dynamic or sinusoidal or oscillatory function or number, or a number that's basically varying in time, or a number that you can, the, the measurement of the number itself varies in time, well, then you can, and, and suppose it's taken, for example, the sinusoidal behavior, then we can take on this little circle uh, to describe it in this complex domain. And again, this is quote real, this is quote imaginary. Okay? Now, here's the crazy part. This entire thing is basically just our own uh, kind of mathematical notation. So whenever we're describing something as like A plus BI or BJ, or we're saying like cosine theta plus sine j theta, uh, whenever we're having these different components making up these complex numbers, again, this is basically something we made up as humans. Like the, again, I, I really want to drill a concept that complex numbers, complex that, numbers that are made up of two components, does not mean that this component does not exist and this one exists. It just means that this is the one that you can measure and look at 
in the time instance that you're looking at it. And this is the one that's basically still within the system, but it's either lagging or it's delayed or it's hidden or something basically is going on where you cannot see it uh, at, at, the, at the given time, kind of like the, 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 um, the fingers analogy that I gave you. Now here's the cool part is suppose um, over here, once, once we identify like a certain complex value, we can, instead of using complex values, we can do something that's much, much simpler, which basically we just identify the angle where this complex, and I'm gonna just erase this and draw it again, just to make this easier. So suppose we have, again, some complex value over here, right? And again, we said we can trace it, find out what this real value here is, let's call this A, and then we can trace this guy over here, and then we can find what this value is, which is BI or BJ. Um, now, we know that, assuming that this is some type of sinusoidal behavior, that's going like this, that's derived from this, uh, we can just simply draw a line that goes over here, and then basically, based on the length of this line, and based on this angle over here, this angle is gonna depend on the time. Basically, at which time are you looking at the signal? For example, going back to our finger analogy, let's say at some time over here, I have five fingers. Then after some time passes, I only have three, and we're like over here. And then I have zero, and, and hence they're all imaginary or hidden and so on. So basically, all the, once, once you figure out what it is that you're trying to look at, and at what certain time you're trying to look at it, then all you basically need to do is to calculate this angle over here. And once you calculate this angle over here, this basically replaces the need for you to break things down into two components. And hence, the complex numbers, which are usually, again, made of like cosine theta plus j sine theta, can be decomposed into this e to the j theta. And this is something that's very, very fascinating. This is basically a phasor notation where we're using this circle with this magnitude and this phase to replace the need to have two separate components. Now you could even argue that this value is not complex, even though you could break it down into a sine and a cosine, which are complex because they're made up of more things. This is really made up of one thing. This is really just made up of this line and this angle at which it's rotating, right? So again, this is just showing you that complex does not necessarily mean uh, it has to be made up of certain things. That's just a mathematical notation we use to describe things and see how, how it behaves. Now here's the beauty, beauty of, about this thing. This uses an exponential function, but then by throwing a j inside the exponent, it makes it behave like a circle. And there's another thing that's fascinating about phasors. Is that, so if you have something that's like e to the x, and you try to plot it, it's gonna look something like this, like it's gonna start like that and then it's gonna just go crazy up and it's gonna go up exponentially, right? But if you replace that x with like a jx or like a j theta and you throw that j in there, now you're having basically a circle and you're having, you're having rotational behavior. But why is that? Why are you starting, why, why is something that's supposed to exponentially grow or exponentially decay uh, suddenly just by the in, in, uh, inclusion of imaginary numbers become something that is uh, circular or rotational or oscillatory. Uh, it is kind of odd. And why? And, and this, this is an identity that's very often seen in math. Where does this come from? Like why do exponential, what, why does an exponential function coupled with an imaginary value lead us to sinusoidal behavior or, or to the combination or, or to, the, to this complex value that is sinusoidal? What, what does that even mean? And what, what, what do exponentials even mean? So I know that I, I would really like to jump on to explain the Fourier transforms before I move, before, now, now that we've covered complex numbers, but if you don't have a deep understanding of exponentials and exponential functions, and especially this identity over here of like e to the j theta equals cosine theta plus j sine theta, if you don't understand what this means, then let me know in the comments and I will make a video about exponential functions and rotational and oscillatory behavior before we move on to the Fourier transform, because Fourier transform is going to involve a lot of oscillations and a lot of exponentials um, in of itself. So let me know in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, love.